thank you for having me. We're going to talk about the development of the Zepto technology um, and, and a little bit more about the capsular rexus. You can tell that it's a very important topic when all that's being dedicated in the research. And I uh, have been involved with Minosis, now called Centricity, uh, from its uh, beginning. And as you can tell from some of the other talks that the importance of the capsular rexus, we want it to be perfect in size, shape, and its location for centration. And there's a number of ways to achieve it, but the proof of principle of using the nitinol ring started uh, about a decade ago, um, and it led to an NIH grant that um, led to the early development of the Zepto technology that involved the nitinol ring housed in a silicone home to be used to, to perform the capsulotomy. And it led to the evolving of a number of tips from early on the left to later on the right. And the early Zepto system uh, was first used on rabbits at the Moran Eye Institute by Dr. Werner and Dr. Mamelis and uh, led to some great results. And the first human Zeptos were performed by Dr. Kevin Waltz and myself in El Salvador. And this is my actual uh, very, very first Zepto procedure and it went beautiful. I'll show some more videos here in a little bit. But we took our desires to the FDA uh, after developing a protocol and had a great meeting and proceeded to have a clinical trial that went very well. And the current handpiece, now FDA approved, involves a rather sophisticated little silicone suction cup with a nitinol ring of 4.4 millimeters in diameter that leads to a capsular rexus diameter of around 5.2 millimeters, all driven by this console. And I like how it fits right into surgery on my surgical tray. Dr. Packer talked about some of this also, but we know that the lens epithelial cells, as far as the germative zone, are out near the equator, right under the anterior capsule. And what we want to try to do is prevent that anterior capsule from fusing to the posterior capsule. So overlap of the capsule, like Dr. Packard said, is so important because if we don't get it, that anterior capsule leaflet can fuse. And the sequence of events that happens in the capsular bag for fibrosis and contraction can lead to tilt and decentration of our optic and reduction, of course, in image quality and glare and dysphotopsias. And this has been studied beautifully in the past by people such as Dr. Apple. And he described a less aggressive PCO, that is our goal, versus a fibrotic aggressive PCO that we wanna really try to prevent. And a number of great researchers said the same exact thing, that apposition, of the anterior capsule edge to the posterior capsule is dangerous with regards to what it does to capsular fibrosis. And anterior capsule is dangerous, leading to that fibro fibrotic type PCO. And so many people have talked about it. So how do we prevent this? Because in this publication by Carlson, just a little bit of apposition of the anterior capsule to the posterior capsule leads to a progressive zippering and a progressive decentration of the implant over time. We really, really want to do our best to prevent this in surgery. And we've all seen it for 360 degrees. I like to call it capsular fusion syndrome. And so as far as our goal, it's 360 degrees of overlap of that peripheral optic. And there's a number of great ways to do it. The capsular laser that Dr. Packard talked about, uh, femto that Shiraz talked about. And for you femto surgeons, you really want to center on an OCT guided image of the lens. You don't want to center on the pupil. You want to center 
on the lens. But how do we do it manually? And how do we do it with something like Zepto? Well, it involves using some reflections that are in every surgery there to help us. Specular reflection is a mirror-like reflection off of surfaces that happens beautifully in the eye. They're called catoptric images and they were first described by Dr. Perkinji, a Czech anatomist and physiologist who not only was the first to describe protoplasm, he described the Purkinje fibers in our central nervous system, and he also prescribed the Purkinje images, which you sometimes hear as Purkinje Sanson, um, in honor of, of Dr. Sanson, who was a French surgeon and ophthalmologist who learned and taught about these images. But basically, there's four of them. And the first two come off the cornea, one off the front of the cornea, one off the, on the back, and the second two come off the lens, the front of the lens and the back of the lens. But the first three, Purkinje one, two, and three, are upright because they're coming off of a convex mirror. And the fourth, since it's coming off of a concave mirror, is in, inverted. And the Purkinje one and four are the ones that actually are used in a lot of tracking technology because they can be very reliable. And a lot of diagnostic instruments will use it. But on my microscope, the Purkinje one looks like, I think it looks like kind eyes. And the Purkinje four is inverted and I feel like it looks like almost like sinister eyes. And you can use those to center both the capsulotomy and the implant. And like Dr. Packer said, both need to be centered, the capsulotomy and the implant. But you can see here, Purkinje one is the brightest and looks like the kind eyes. I just pointed at Purkinje three and the vitreous. And Purkinje four is the inverted. And you can see when the patient fixates, that's a very unique relationship for that patient. And the reason I like to know that relationship is sometimes with anesthesia, they can't fixate. And I need to recreate that relationship as a surrogate for patient fixation. So if someone's looking off axis, Purkinje one and four aren't aligned. If they look the other way, they're not aligned. But when they fixate, there's a very unique and consistent relationship between Purkinje one and four that I use in every single cataract surgery that I can use. And let's say I'm looking at my microscope and it's someone like this that kept looking a little superior, a little bit of bells, they had anesthesia and they would not look directly at the light. And I can use my 0.12s to align them. And then I can center my capsulotomy and my implant. So I can do this manually if I have to. This patient was another one where I could use my manual technique and mark the corneal surface and then perform my manual capsulotomy. And this deserves the time and effort. I call it a refractive capsulotomy because it's so important for long-term implant centration and to minimize any decentration. And so we all know how important this step is, but when you're doing it manually, you are following a corneal mark to do a lens-based procedure. So you're constantly having to adjust for parallax. Whereas in this case, I was able to do that and I achieved beautiful 360 degrees of anterior capsule overlap. But that's not always easy to do manually. So Zepto was developed with a push rod to push the silicone house and the nitinol ring into the anterior chamber and to use the same Purkinje method. I have one and four aligned perfectly. And then I asked for suction and the silicone housing sucks beautifully to the anterior capsule. I deliver the energy. There's energy delivery. We release with a flush of BSS. It actually creates a nice auto hydro dissection. I have a nice capsulotomy. 
And then I can go ahead, because I know my capsulotomy is centered nicely on the patient's visual axis, I can use it to guide my implant centration. And so when I place this multifocal implant, when I know I don't have 360 degrees of overlap, I know there's a happier spot for that implant in the capsule, and I rotate until I get that capsule in, in, in a beautiful uh, place with the implant. So I can use both the Brakenji and the capsular edge for centration. And this patient did uh, absolutely beautiful. And so the Zepto technology uh, works great. I'm trying to achieve this overlap and whatever is your favorite method. Femto taught us so much about um, how to do a great capsulotomy and things like capsular laser and, and using your best manual techniques or using Zepto, whatever is your favorite. I have just found really good luck with Zepto. Here's a light adjustable lens. And one of my favorite combinations is Zepto with a light adjustable lens. I've had beautiful, beautiful results with the light adjustable lens uh, technology. And you can see how this capsulotomy did beautiful over time. I did publish this uh, in the uh, um, ASCRS journal, and it actually uh, won the, the Rosen Award at the ESCRS last year for uh, best new surgical technique if you, if you want to read about centering the capsulotomy and the implant on the visual axis. Thank you.